This is another one-on-one -on -one with TJK. So it's part of the series where we talk to people and as Jackson says, learn, unlearn and relearn. And this is the first of its kind where it's a uh, young individual who started his own organization um, serving a community in Africa. And I'll let Menelik Uchenna share more. Um, Menelik, I met you as Menelik, but um, you know now uh, you go by Minna. Is that correct? 100%, 100%. Let's just dive in. And, um, you know, in the future, TJK Foundation is um, going to continue to um, have a series that serves uh, young people and people of all ages. And Jackson's going to continue to travel the world uh, speaking and, and serving all kinds of organizations. But one of the focuses going forward for forever is going to be um, serving young entrepreneurs and, and founders to uplift their missions. And so in the future, um, that will come in all kinds of ways and fundraising, but but right now the sharing of information is, uh, is our best resource. Um, so this is kind of an adventure, an experiment, and a fun way for you both to meet for the first time, you to share your organization and mission, and um, Jackson to share his experiences and um, and whatever comes up. So I'm really excited for this. Um, so just dive in, Minna, and, uh, and share with us uh, your, your uh, story of yourself and your vision for your founder, your organization. Yes. Mm, absolutely. Um, so my birth name is Menelik Uchenna Obigola. Yes. And so as time went on, I've had you know really wonderful nicknames given to me and Minna. Uh, the name has a multiplicity of meanings, and in, in Japanese, it means everyone. And so uh, mena, just for me, is something that really resonates with my spirit of you know, just everybody. Like, this world is full of so many different cultures and people and languages, and there's just so much that God has created and given to us. And so in my life now, Mena Uchenna is just the name that I really resonate with. And Uchenna means God's will. So a little bit about me is that when I was born, my parents separated. And when my mother met her new husband, they, uh, they both took me to Nigeria. And his grandfather, his father looked at me and he said, ah, Uchenna. And this means God's will, because he understood everything that had happened uh, in my life at such a young age. And he's like, wow, the fact that you're here on this earth, it's God's will. And so just putting that together, Menu Chenna is just a, yeah, just a very powerful name that I, I really look to do amazing things within the world. And so also, I just want to say, uh, Dachi, so my mother, this is the reason why I'm here. This is the reason why I do everything that I do. Uh, without this woman, I, I would not, I could not see myself doing anything positive. I could not, of course, I wouldn't even be on the planet. There's just so much of me that would not exist if I was not given birth to by this woman. So I just want to give thanks to her. Uh, she passed away in 2015 from cancer and just my whole life, she's just the greatest Christian that I ever knew. Uh, her walk was very much like, like, like in the book of Job, just the suffering that he went through, uh, but just his, his steadfast faith in God and in giving glory and doing good unto others. So that was just my mom's life, you know, and, I, and just, I was just so inspired by that. Just growing up, I, I never really understood completely what she believed in, but I just think that she was a wonderful person and just always doing so much for me and caring for me, caring for two sons that she did not give birth to that, that came to America and she just treated them like they were her children. She treated them as if they were her own, her own children. It's just like my, my life has been one of having people like my mother in my life and, you know, doing things contrary to the goodness that I know, you know, is, is inside of me and uh, I, I was raised in. And so now at this point of my life, uh, I've really just sought God a lot more than I ever have in life. And last year, I really just gave my life to Christ and 
really just they made a you know complete 180 just transformation just flipped and it's just been a wonderful journey of now doing the work that I do in Nigeria yeah so the organization is called the Adachi Home and the Adachi Home works with children who if they did not meet the Adachi Home would have no other resources no other way of uh, achieving anything in life. The region that we work in is is considered a danger zone. So this is an area where <clears throat> if you are Christian, you know, there, there is a high possibility of you dying. Uh, if you are not a certain sect of Islam, there's yeah. a high possibility of you dying. And so we've just been blessed to be able to, as Christians, go into that community and find Muslims who are open to receiving education and, and seeing the, 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 the just the suffering of their children, just everything that's happening and how it's affecting their children and wanting to, you know, give their children education and give them a future, you know, better resources. And so these children that we work with, we have about 30 in total at the moment. By the end of this year, it's going to be 70. And they're, they're just, they're just extremely wonderful. The children go through so much. They, some of them, their parents have died. Some of them live inside of a building, uh, which is called an Almajiri home. This is like an Islamic seminary school and the home that they live in would be considered an Almajiri home. And they, it's a dilapidated building that has just, uh, it's the, 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 the roof is leaking, the, the floors are, 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 are cracked, just everything. But they're so happy and smiling, you know. They 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 they're not able to feed themselves within that within that building, so they go on the street and beg for food. And but when we see them in class, they're they're so happy, they're so smiling, just to be able to receive yeah. love and to be able to receive, you know, education. Uh, the biggest thing is food. So we we have a chef who who cooks for us, and we give them big plates of food that they can enjoy. Uh, we take them off the street every Thursday and they're with us all day. And it's just like the, the experiences that they have there is just something where they, they don't want to leave. They're just, they, they get to class before any of the teachers arrive and they don't want to leave the class. And so our, our biggest goal with these children is to take them off the streets completely. So with these 70 students, we're, we're going to do everything in our power to have them with us six days a week. And on that Sunday, if they're not with us, still provide uh, food for them. And that's just, the, that's just the biggest thing that the Adachi Home is working on right now. Uh, we will in the future expand our reach to different parts of the world because there's there's so much happening everywhere uh, yeah. but at the moment uh, with my experience as a Nigerian and everything that I've uh, been through in the name of Nigeria uh, I definitely look to start with Nigeria um, but that's a very very brief uh, uh, summary of what we do at the Adachi home very good very good Nan, so many commonalities here. First of all, nice to meet you. Uh, I, I embrace your names and thank you for sticking to Mena. Mena meaning everyone. Uh, that's powerful. Uh, I mean, we are born, I was born in Uganda. I was given a name at birth, Twesige. Jackson is my middle name. Kaguri is my last name. So there are so many commonalities here. I see the power of God working through you and uh, your greeting right off, bless you, greeting the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Uh, man, so much. But your mother, lifting the picture of your mother right there also really touches my heart. You, Matt will tell you, my mother died at 93 years of age old age, she grew and grew and got so many health problems. In 2020, she finally passed away. She was my hero. I've loved people. I've loved, I love my children. My mom really, really was the true sense of the word love. So for you to name this home of children in Nigeria after your mother, Adachi, is such a, a great memory and her spirit, her soul, 
Our love will continue to live forever. Thank you for doing that. Here at TJK One on One, we dive into so many topics, but today we are doing it different. Always there's something we can do different. The role God plays in your life is huge. We all here, we wake up and breathe. I tell people, come to this channel. We don't discriminate. We bring everybody, but me, the host TJK, so S. J. Jackson Kaguri, born and raised a Christian man, still a Christian man. We preach on this channel. Uh, every month we post here a sermon to encourage people to uplift each other. When I preach, I'm not preaching to the world, I'm preaching to myself. And that day I preached about uh, prayer, what is the, the role prayer does in our, in our life. Uh, the two sons your mother had continue to look out for one another. Uh, the children you are taking care of in Nigeria, you, you mentioned the children you started with. I go back 21 years ago when I started in Yaka. I have a, I have a, a working, a working um, brand right now on, on, on Matt, both on his chest in Yaka, on his heart in Yaka. 21 years ago, Mena, after my brother had passed away because of HIV AIDS, uh, Jimmy Carter wrote on my book and said, I turned tragedy into hope for others. The tragic tragedy of the death of your mother is now turning into hope for others. And that means, my brother, that your mom lives every single day. She's smiling right now going, I don't know about that YouTube channel, but I'm proud of my son. The kids who are there in that home, they are playing every single day on their knees. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, that somebody, somebody's memory made me to get here. 21 years ago now turns into 86,000 children. Your goal at the end of this year is 70 children. Doing this work is process by process. So while we have this conversation, you and I, we are also being going to educate others out there. There are so many manners who want to do something in their communities and they have not done what you have done. They have not started. So one thing you have accomplished, which is the biggest step, start. And don't shy away. Don't apologize you started. Don't be discouraged you started. Start, focus, and do not bring because you will do it. And when you start blinking and fearing, oh my goodness, this is too hard now. I can't raise the money for food tomorrow. Go on Nyaka website and remember, 21 years ago, they were 36 children. And now they are doctors, they are lawyers, they are uh, enthusiastic supporters. They are the ones who watch this fast before anyone. They were the ones who will comment. We look at young people all over the world, starting at home. Other thing I want to recommend, commend you is you started at home. We are Christians, so we can use this phrase, charity begins at home. Uh, kids, when we are learning the Bible, we would talk about all these verses and at home they will make me, actually for me, my grandfather will make me recite Bible verses every Friday at night. Those Bible verses, my man manner, to this day, I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm reciting the same memory verses from when I was five, four years old. So I have four children. I tell them, look, we are going to read the Bible every day. We are going to pray every time. You wake up before you even get out of your bed, say that prayer first. Thank God you are alive. So I'm glad you are here. I'm glad you are a believer. I'm glad your mom didn't die in vain. I'm glad her name continues to be on that home, Adechi home. So welcome. And now, if it was you trying to advise somebody else, you have already started with getting to advice and process on how to go about it. Now that you have already started, if somebody else was struggling to get something going, what would you tell them they must focus on? Mm, the biggest thing that I would say, I guess, uh, let me let me uh, elaborate on this. So 10 years ago, when I was 18, I always knew I wanted many children. 
Like I was always thinking about adopting and having an orphanage. Like it was always in my mind mm. and I never really knew like how to go about it. I was just like, man, like I would love to do something like this. And for me, if I would have started at that time, it would not have been as powerful as it is now. And so oftentimes there are experiences that we need to have in order to build the dream that we have. And when it comes time to actually start, things are never perfect. They are never, ever perfect. You just have to understand that it's not your will that is moving all of these plans. It's God is the one who put this on you and God is the one that's going to supply the energy that you need to actually accomplish it. Because a lot of times we will begin to think about ourselves and what we are capable of and we'll, we'll forget that is not ourselves who even nice. made any of this possible, yeah? That it's God who who is moving through us. And so in that imperfection, we just have to go out and uh, allow the spirit of God to really move. And it's just, it's going to be a powerful experience for that person who just, just starts, you know, just gets going because there's already so many people out there who are ready to listen and receive and give. You know, you just have to be willing to go out there and meet them. For me right now, I do fundraising door to door uh, in the city, yeah? So this is strangers going into businesses and talking to people. So it, it's, it's, it's an amazing experience because the reception that I get is mm. I cannot say this is me. I, I, have, I give everything to my mom. And I give everything to God because I'm like, man, I know my life and I know my thoughts and I know my imperfections. Like, what is this that they're feeling that they want to give and they are affected by what I'm saying, you know? So for those people who are in that place of struggle, there are people who are going to be so blessed to meet them and hear their story and want to give, yeah? So I think that would be my, my biggest advice is just uh, to remember that it's God who's doing all of this and just start, just just begin with anything, whatever it is, just start, even a little bit, just start. That's that's wonderful, perfect. You see, uh, <clears throat> I tell people all the time, <clears throat> God's will will be done no matter what. And when I asked you a question and you started answering, I wrote here my next, what I need to pitch in that God's will will be done no matter what. And before I finish writing, will be done, you said it. <laughs> so God's will will be done. This work we do, my brother Mena, and everybody who is listening to us, this work is not about you. It's not about me. It's not about Matt. Our producer, Matt Stubble, Navasa is his Ugandan name. He's Ebo. That's what that mean, name means. That name was given to him by grandmothers while he's shooting pictures and going with grandmothers, taking pictures. And when we finished, put him to stand on, on a stage. And I said, you, he's come here nine times. He has to get a name. And without bringing Navasa. God is able. It does not matter how much you've gone through. It does not matter how many circumstances will try to stop you. It does not matter how many people will doubt you. It does not matter how many loved ones will turn against you. God's will will be done. Period. And you got that down already. Number, that, number one, we say the start. Number two, we are now giving you lessons. You can write them down, our listeners. Number two, we are saying to you, this is not about you. No, my, man, I not, you don't need to write anything down. This will be <laughs> given to you, the whole recording. I'm talking to the people who will be listening to this, uh, this episode. You start 
Number two, it's not about you. And we are using God. We are both Christian men here. Your higher power could be Muhammad. It could be Buddha. It could be nothing. It could be ancestors. But there is a higher power beyond you. Otherwise, you wouldn't sleep and wake up the next day while somebody died in their sleep yesterday. There's some higher power. Mine is God. Mena is God. So you start. God's will will be done. It's not about you. Take yourself out of the picture. The hardest fundraising I know is door to door. And you just said it's what you do. But also the most effective fundraising. For those of you who live in the United States, during the campaigns, you cannot count how many pamphlets are sent on your door. Those people come and knock on your door. If you are home, they will tell you something. Not everyone opens the door. But the one who opens the door will never forget that encounter. Those who have opened the door have heard about Mama Adich, and Adich is home. Her spirit has basically come through Mena, the son, into your home. At that point, it's not about Mena, neither is it about her, his mother. It's now something beyond all of us that goes into your home and you deal with it the way you want. When I get up to give a speech, Matt has filmed me all over the world in so many places. I don't care whether you're a former president and I've met four. I don't care whether you're a professor with 20 PhDs. At that moment, I am standing at what I'm talking about. It is something beyond me. The grandmothers, 20,000 of them in Uganda, the children who are sitting in Nigeria, Adachi home right now, cannot be in New York tell the story. So at that moment, I am representing them where they cannot be. And the blessings that follow it are tremendous blessings. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. I tell people I am blessed. The Bible is clear. <laughs> the hand that gives is more blessed than the hand that receives. But I tell grandmothers, they give me so many blessings. Everybody has a story. You said it, Menno. You know you are going to, somebody's going to start. God's will be done. It's not about you. Knock on those doors if you can. Not everyone can do it, but those who can do it. But also remember, everybody has a story. Many of us are selfish human beings. Not the testimony. You can't tell that testimony. If you tell that testimony, it's going to inspire somebody else. So tell your story. And then there is no age limit right here. He started at 18. 18, the seed was already planted. The timing was not right at that time. The timing was right when it happened because it is not about you. You cannot determine it yourself. Oh, let me now go uh, buy Starbucks. When, when uh, Elon Musk was putting in all these bids to buy, to buy Twitter, before the timing was right, he could not buy it. When the timing was right, he bought it. Companies in USA have tried to buy TikTok. <laughs> Left and right. Yeah, 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 this. When the timing is right, it happens. When it is not, you can dance on the needle. It's not going to happen. What we do now here is, uh, I, I'm going to say something, then I'll, I'll ask you another question and we we'll continue in the conversation. These are nuggets of wisdom. 21 years of running in Yaka, all 52 years of my life, mine every day is a lesson. Whether it is a tragedy, whether it is a, a court case I have to answer, whether it is a car that bumps in me when I'm driving my children in Florida, whether it is a divorce that happened, everything, I learn a lesson from each, each of them. And I tell my children, everything, you're going to learn something. Can be somebody trying to bury you at school, try to get a lesson out of it. What we do and what you have started doing in Nigeria is planting seeds. The analogy of seeds is also biblical. Jesus told the story where all these seeds in a parable were thrown out there. When you are walking those streets and homes, there are homes that scream at you, like come knock on my door. There are those that scream at you, please do not get here. Seeds will be thrown out there. Some seeds will land on fertile ground and they will germinate and make mustard seeds. 
Nyaka. Nyaka is the true example of a mustard seed. The babies, I looked in the eyes 21 years ago and said, we are going to help you get education. Now have babies, have wives, have doctorates, have engineering degrees. They have homes of their own. They drive me in Uganda, a baby I took off the street and educated. I sit in a kind of sleep and they drive me 10 hours, confidently. That's a mustard seed. It is a seed that continues to give and give. That one child will never need my help financially their entire lives. They treat me now. They buy me and, and mat drinks now. Oh, let me treat. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, I, 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 I now they want to buy me a car. And I'm going, establish yourselves first because I have cars. <laughs> But these are mustard seeds. Those are seeds that landed on fertile soil germinated, both from the recipients and the seeds of those who support your work from the people who support you. Matt knows we have a donor who met me on a plane when I was coming to United States the first time. She's 97 years old right now, Harriet Lewis. My God. She refused to be called Idari. Harriet Lewis met me. The seeds that landed in her heart continued in her family. Her husband passed away. Her daughter passed away. She was a pilot in uh, Alaska. The woman is 97, still lives alone in Great Neck, New York. She played tennis until she was 93 and challenged one of our big supporters, Barry Siegel. Barry Sigo didn't get time to go play this game. And to this day, she tells me, Barry Sigo was scared to play me. I would have beaten him. Barry Sigo goes, no way. <laughs> There's no way she would have beaten me. But she's 97 now, she can't play. But her heart, the seeds that, the Nyaka seeds that landed her from the giving side germinated. They are seeds that will land on the rocks and will never take root. They are seeds that will land in the thorns. This is Jesus talking to his disciples. And they will grow thin. They are deprived of the sun. They are deprived of standing alone. They are in weeds just growing. Those will keep milking, milking, but they will never bear seeds because they don't have enough sunlight. They don't have enough soil. So my brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen who are listening, remember when you cast out those seeds, don't expect each one of them to look the same as the other. The same when we give to children. I have children I've taken care of and grandmothers. Some of these young people are in touch with me every single day. Papa, how are you? Papa, how is your health? There are some I've never heard from when they, since they graduated. There are some who died in accidents. One who died in a, uh, in, in a <laughs> uh, thunderlight. Thunder came and struck one of our children. One was climbing a mango tree. Every child in my village climbs a mango tree and fell from a mango tree and died. I fell from Eucalyptus tree 200 meters up and I'm still here. So there are those seeds. All this, we are not in control. God is in our control. So what driving passion. So you are 18, the seeds are already in your head. They are dancing around. You can't do it. Timing is not right. Now you get to Adachi. You go to Nigeria. You get on that plane. Get there. Bring the, uh, the money you have saved. When you are doing this work, the one thing I always say, be accountable. Accountability is a huge key. The moment you knock on somebody's door and they take out their check and give it to you, they are trusting you to do the right thing with their money. So accountability is huge in this work, which I'm sure you're already doing. Donors want to know. Many of them will tell you, don't worry, man, I trust you. I don't even need a receipt. Take the money and help the children. My brother, yes, but come back and let them know what the money did. The satisfaction to a giver is fulfilling that inside their heart that something I contributed to is working. 
That's why the 97-year-old Harriet Lewis still asks me when I talk to her, how is our school going? She thinks this one. We have three now. She knew 30 students and she has supported every single year because I always come back and let her know this is what the men have done. Doesn't matter whether Coca-Cola writes a check, Coca-Cola also wants to know their money did something. Sometimes we tend to think that when somebody has a lot of money, they don't care where it is going. No, the difference between those who continue to be successful fundraising, the nyakas of the world, is because we come back and account for the resources. And then give people more opportunities to give and give at a deeper level. So at starter students, you might be raising $500,000. When you come back, account for it. Then somebody will give you more and you account for it and increase as you go. Next thing you everyone must learn, and I'm sure you are already looking at this, the needs are always going to be there. You cannot solve it all. I started with HIV AIDS orphans. Have I solved the HIV crisis? No. What I have in my hand is what I can throw. What can fit in my hand, how many seeds is what I will throw. I can't solve HIV AIDS, but I cannot be overwhelmed not to do something. So you do your part, Matt does his part, and another one does their part. Then um, the last, I say the last thing last time, and I, it was not the last thing. We all have something to do. You will be good at knocking at the door. Matt will be good at putting these videos together. A journalist in the newspaper in your uh, area where you live will write the story and the story will touch different things. So you have to look at multidimensional approaches on how you spread the word, how you get those seeds in different hands. So this, who is helping you now uh, to do the work? Do you have a team of people? Are you doing it by yourself? You have volunteers. Mm -hmm. how, how are you going about this now? Mm, okay. So here in America, it is only me. Uh, I started this with uh, my, my partner, Victor Bello, who is Nigerian born, lives in Nigeria. Uh, a little bit more detail is that last year, I had a juice company that I created in memory of my mother called Adachi Juice. And so we were, set, or I was selling juice in Columbus, Ohio. And I gave away the money to dig a water well in Cross River State, Nigeria. This is Southeastern Nigeria. And that experience was very powerful for me. And I was like, wow, you know, I want to. I want to do more, like what else can I get into? And this year came and I and I said, I want to be involved with children because mm. children, that is the real impact is to work with them. That's the best investment. That's the best thing that you can do in this, in this world is to work with the children. And so I was on a Zoom meeting uh, and I met this man, Victor Bello, and he had already had a, a foundation that he created doing different medical outreaches in Nigeria, many different things. And so we had a meeting together. He showed me all of his content, everything he's been working on. And he was getting started to create a school for vulnerable Muslim children. And I said, I want to get involved with you on that. Of course, uh, in Nigeria, you want to do things, money is always an issue. And so for me, I said, hey man, I see what you're doing. I believe in what you're doing. I believe in you, let's do this. So everything started with a thousand dollars. From a thousand dollars, now we're almost at 70 children. We have two classrooms. We have hundreds of workbooks hundreds of just so many different things and so everything started with me and him so in america it's just me of course i have many people who have supported what i'm doing uh, but all of my so like uh literal support yes. with the establishment itself is in nigeria yeah so that's where everything goes on that's where all the teachers are that's where my partner is um, so still working on the American side of things, uh, everything currently is in Nigeria. 
Very, very good. And with the, with that team, so you have your main partner. And can you expand on um, kind of who's doing the the photos and video, mostly the videos, because your video presence on like Instagram is um, of that of any organization. And I think it's because the team is there on the ground, filming, top yes. quality, editing, sending you stuff instantly, and then you're maintaining the Instagram, right? Could you speak a little bit about the team and the media approach there? Because that's yes, that's doing right. And I think Jackson could speak on maybe how to um, how to fundraise around that um, that thing you already have that's really strong. Mm, yes, yes. So we do have a amazing videographer named Jesse White. And we have his brother as well, Jericho, who is our photographer. So, so Jesse, he was actually already doing work with missionary groups and also doing work with my partner, Victor Bello. And so when I got to meet him and I got to look at his content, I was, I was like, man, you know, Victor, we need to bring this guy on permanently. Mm -hmm. You know, he needs to be our videographer. Anything goes on anything, any kind of video content we're trying to create, we need to have him. He lives five hours away from our school, but anytime we're doing anything uh, special, we invite him, we invite his brother. And so both of them are professionals in their fields. They've been doing this. They're, they're actually young, but they've been doing it for a while now, yeah? So in the in the time that they've been doing it, just their 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 abilities have just grown and so it's it really shows that it really shows itself through our content and um yeah that's what i would have to say about the two of them just two very special individuals who um oftentimes give up jobs that are high paying jobs in order to come out and film for us so they're very very valued uh people on on our team and uh just the wealth that they are going to receive when things are really moving. Uh, we're, we are going to bless them and their families. We're actually working on getting both of them to come to America and take part in. So uh, I guess to elaborate more, the fundraising that I do is very lucrative. And I found out about the fundraising through a missionary group that I was with. So I sell jewelry and that jewelry uh, goes can go for twenty five to forty dollars, and on different day to day basis, depending on how long I'm out for, we'll make it. I'll, I'll make a thousand dollars, and so I think about them in Nigeria, and um, I like. I'm like, I know how Nigerians hustle, you know, and so I'm like, wow, if they had the chance to come to America, not yeah. only with their skill set as photographers and videographers, but if they had the chance to come here sell some jewelry even for a week and go back home with four thousand dollars what would that mean for their families you know so we're really going to bless our, both our videographer and our photographer just for all the sacrifices that they're making for us and um yeah it's just it's a real blessing we're working on a magazine uh, our jericho our photographer just came out last thursday and did portrait shots of all of our students uh it's just amazing amazing work that he just did for us uh and pretty much for free you know and we're about to we're about to make this magazine and i'm um, going to be picking it up tomorrow and it's going to be just an incredible incredible piece of work that our, our photographer uh, was involved in uh right now on instagram we have a domino's pizza video up uh so in just nigeria they have domino's over there and we we wanted to bring our students there because Obviously, they're only used to begging outside of Domino's. They've never experienced anything never like that. Him. Yeah, and so we're like, you know, let's bring them inside there. Of course, let's make a great video. And so right now, uh, we put it up like a little over a month ago or less than a month ago. It's at like 40, more, more than, it's like 45,000 views, 3,000 likes or something like that. And um, just everyone is so happy with the videographer. They're like, who did this? Where'd this sound come from? Like, this is incredible. So many people sharing the video, saving the video. So yeah, our, our videographer and our photographer are just two incredible young people. Uh, the photographer is 21, 
and I believe uh, the, the videographer is 24. So two young guys who are amazing at their craft and just giving back to the world, you know, giving back to their community. It's even outside of their community because in Nigeria, as we know, it's very tribal. So they live in an area called Kanu. And uh, yes. the area where we are is just, yes. And so, of course, it's still Muslim area, but it's it's different. Everyone is is to themselves. Like, okay, I'm, I'm from Abuja. I take care of Abuja. Oh, yeah. I'm from Lagos. I take care of Lagos, you know? <laughs> so it's just incredible how these two young youths, their, their minds are already, you know, giving to other communities, you know? You know, my brother Mena, as you continue talking, uh, I keep writing notes. I'm, I write notes a lot. Uh, take notes. I, now, no word goes, I, because I'm a writer too. I've written seven books. Uh, I hope one of these days I can uh, get you at least the original one, the school for my village, which tells the entire story from how it started and how it has grown. Uh, wow. See, Matt, Matt has the two, the, two, the amazing ones. You you talk about a school for my village. When I started this work, I used the five thousand dollars I had saved here, my own personal money to buy a house. That's how this thing started. And people who serve on boards and volunteers, I always tell them: if you can't give to the organization you are serving on, then you don't have the buy-in. Uh, it, it's that commitment. I support this. And I invite you to also support it. Uh, but the notes I was taking here, I'm, I'm thinking uh, we have a former board member who is from Nigeria. Uh, I don't remember exact area, Anu, and I'll get this to make sure that he watches this and sees your story. Interestingly, uh, Anu is, has a PhD in breeding. He's a highly educated guy. He got educated in the UK. He served on Nyaka board for many years. He went to Uganda to a start fishing business for, for Nyaka, which we didn't end up not doing. He worked for Tyson in breeding chickens. I mean, he's accomplished. He's um, working now in Arkansas area. Amazing father, Christian man. Uh, him and his sister have stuff they do in in, uh, in Nigeria, but I'll make the connection. But also, as you speak, I'm reminded of other entrepreneurs from the continent who have come here, started a business. I like this juice company and Columbus, Ohio is right three hours from where I am. I'm in Michigan right now. Juice mm -hmm. company, side by side, entrepreneurial spirit and now putting it into giving. But Matt also wanted us to really address this social media presence and the two young people you are talking about. Make sure they watch this and watch it clearly. I thank you guys, two of you. And you are doing something we didn't do as an organization because we didn't know. See, the greatest thing you have, you, the young generation, at 52, I can call you young <laughs> because my oldest son is 20. <clears throat> Nicholas is 20 years old. He's uh, at, uh, in New York at uh, Rochester Institute of Technology. Amazing, caring a man, young man, so proud to be his father. And I have three more who are here downstairs as they wait for me right now. Nolan, Tali, and Tessa, amazing children. Entrepreneurial spirit is huge. If we knew what we know now, we would have used the power of pictures and videos way early. Now I'm getting a point where I'm transitioning from Nyaka, creating this TJK, and I knew there's no way I'm going to move TJK from one point to another without Matt. Matt is our photographer who volunteered for seven years straight going to Uganda, raise his own cash, get there and lay on the ground and take amazing pictures. He's taken my pictures that have been used in CNN Heroes and Global Citizen, I've Time Magazine, all these awards have the, my, the pictures. The, we have a picture book, a big book for 20th anniversary, every single picture taken by Matt. We started training people on the ground, but that has not really taken on as much. But with TJK team, the team is in Uganda. 
I knew this. So what I didn't do right with Inyaka in the beginning, I raised, did this organization because I was here, I'm running back and forth. It was not such a huge media person, but I built it from bottom on the ground, but we didn't have photographers and videographers on the ground. Nyaka can tell you a story every single day that will make you cry, make you laugh, make you rejoice, make you praise God all in one story. And I, I hear this Domino's video. I'm going to go look for it and do send it to Domino's headquarters. That's a branding uh, issue. Whether they do anything about it or not, the fact that you respected the children who are begging outside the store and took them inside the store. You see that miracle? People don't see miracles. They, they wait for the heaven to fall down and, and that's the miracle or to jump out of the car burning. That's a miracle. A child who is begging one day, next day seated in a table and eating pizza, a foreign food. They are going to write a biography one day. When I was five years old, I went to Domino's Pizza. Just like I tell a story when I was 24 years old, I got on a plane. Tell that story to my children, like, well, they get on a plane every week. <laughs> they've been to Paris, they've been to England, they've been to Puerto Rico. Now they even have, oh, should we go to Paris or UK or London? I am growing up in the village, walking seven and a half miles on foot, barefoot, no shoe, no underwear, one t shirt. When I go on a plane, I'm like, oh, ah! this is heaven. So these kids just had an amazing experience. Pictures coming on the, from the ground, pictures that are empowering. There's no reason why kids have to be uh, scratching themselves, begging or dad to, to get their pictures out. Eating pizza, success. Harvard University, where I'm going next year for a fellowship, has never posted a picture of the begging student. They have them. They have kids who are there on scholarship who can't afford it, but do they follow them in a dining hall uh, while they are at their worst, can't find a winter coat and take their picture and put them in their, in their brochure? Hell no. Why? They want to project positivity. Come to Harvard, it is success. This is the oldest university in this country, the most prestigious university in the world. They post success empowerment. Come here, your life will change forever. Take the children outside the pizza house, uh, uh, Domino Pizza, take them inside, their lives have changed already. If we have this story 20 years from now, and Matt, this one, somebody told me this the other day and said, there is a, a film they have seen, five years they take kids who are in nursery, take their video, what they want to do, five years later, they come back where they are and update. So somebody, five years is a short time. <clears throat> Selfish people think it is a long time. It's a long time. It's a short time. Half of them eating that pizza, please, five years, get those same kids and follow up with them and remind them of the pizza they ate and where they are. When we started in Yaka, in the village, 10 hours away from Kampala, the city, every time kids got in primary seven, that's when they're about to sit there national exams. Kids who are walking barefoot in grandmother's house are competing with the president's kids who are taken to school in armored cars and escorts. Same exam. They don't care where you come from. It's one national exam. So I said, you know what? The only way to get their foot higher is to bring them from the village before they sit for that exam and come to Kampala, the capital city sit in a car for the first time. They vomit all the way to Kampala. Go look at the parliament where laws are made. Go see a university where you want to start thinking to go. Meet the head of New Vision, the paper that is circulated in the entire country. Meet the congressman, the member of parliament from your area. And when our kids get in parliament, our members of parliament are all straight. Oh, those are children from... They don't even contribute a penny for them to transport. But we are doing it for the children so they can see. Hillary, who is a doctor now, when he saw medical school and the biggest hospital in Kampara, that's when he started, I can be a doctor. Some things we can go by faith. 
others it is action so these kids are already in so to you who are listening to us again you are doing something it's in some country remote somewhere i have a, a, an amazing sister doing amazing work in a, in a democratic republic of congo she's a model in the uk malaika that sister noel every time she has off she goes and she goes with the media team they collect footage for the entire year you go on their social media now we have a way to evangelize like, yeah. Nyaka is, we call it Nyakala is. Now you have a way to get, use the power of social media, encourage those young people on the ground, let them come, learn some new skills, go back, or if they stay, let them train others on the ground. And if you are doing this work and you are on the ground, use the power of social media. Free. Facebook has all the pictures you can put on. They won't charge you a penny. They will sell your information. But 20 years ago, we don't have it. We wish somebody had sold information and give us a platform to share this. TJK is housed on YouTube. Google gives you a platform to share this information. There's no way we would get the information we want to the people all over the world without these channels. And when you retrace them, we get them to move faster. So I'm going to make some connections after our conversation. Definitely I'll connect you to Anu. You need to look up organizations like Global Giving, which is a marketplace for non-profit organization from all around the world. They have ways they will go through your organization between you and your friend, Victor Beko. You can get a Dutch home to be listed. Uh, selling jewelry, is an, I, 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 see the, I see what you are wearing. So now you don't even have to market it. People will wear jewelry and they wear them in so many different ways. The chairperson of Unyaka board, Janice Simon, told me once, I buy jewelry not because I want more, but because it is attached to a cause. You should you go to a meeting and Janice is wearing 10 bracelets on one arm. One it was from Congo, one was made by grandmothers at Unyaka. That's her favorite organization in the world. Thank you, Janice. <laughs> but she has all these because they all are attached to a cause. People no longer want to go buy the biggest diamond around. No, they want to attach their money to something that goes. Tom Shoes made so much money. Buy one, get one free. Bomber socks, which gives Nyaka socks. All our children wear bomber socks, the most expensive sock, pair of sock you can buy. People buy and they take and give some. So as you sell this jewelry, I like your idea of the magazine and this whole social media and the power pictures and videos. Continue to share, tag as many people and encourage young people because they know. TJK team on the ground, our most active TJ team member is on the ground in Yaka. Rita Chanda, shout out to her. But the content she shares on our WhatsApp group and our people who are handling social media, the Carolines, the Casualmatic, the guy who does our um, graphics is in Chisoro near the border with, with Rwanda. It came later to me that, you know what, we need to utilize the skills. And again, the little Christmas I would take them will change their lives. Now imagine if we can get them to come to universities here like you said, it's not only Nigerian that has so every person who has grown up poor and understand how they can break the cycle of poverty, they will hustle. All they have to do is drive pizza and deliver it somewhere. They get a tip. In addition, whew, serve good food and behave well in a restaurant and you get a tip. Mayweather tipped $100,000 the other day. Somebody imagine a kid from Nigeria serving Mayweather and gets a they will pack their bags and go back home and start a business. You've just changed their trajectory of life. But again, the commitment to work, the commitment to rely on our people, our people are smart. They are they, they have the skill set. Sometimes all I need is the camera that Matt is sending me to take to Uganda. What they need is the encouragement you can do it instead of watching 
football, England, cram all the names of, of England players, go on Harvard University and download a free course. That's what Kaju Matic, one of the guys on TJK team told me. He said, the moment you posted you are going to Harvard, I went on Harvard website and I found I can actually take a class. I don't need credit for it. I can learn a skill set. I'm going to Harvard with you. Bam. <laughs> Smart. Another person, I'm going to walk in there and they start begging me. Ah, oh, you know, director, I, I've been struggling. Can you give me this? The other one is going, you're going to Harvard, I'm coming with you. Virtual. The world has changed. Empowerment. Now, when I told him, you finish that class, I can actually even give you a gift of getting a certificate. Because to get a certificate, you pay for it. But imagine if I go to the professor at Harvard University and highlight that they have a kid who is sitting in a village's walking 10 miles to go charge the phone and he's taking your course on the phone. You think they would charge him a certificate? That is effort. That's how I got in Columbia University. I wrote a nest about human rights violation. They said, we want that kid. That's me. No longer kid. What? Whom much is given, much is expected. Your mom made you who you are. You're making proud doing this. The kids who are going through Adachi home are blessed to have you, but they are going to be the mustard seeds of the next generation and education and home. So the work I do is tied into basic human rights. We give you education, it's a basic right. We give you food, a basic right. Give you healthcare, you basic right. We have a hospital, we have clean water, basic right. Place to sleep. We don't build orphanages, we build communities. The grandmothers, 20,000 of them, spread through three different districts of Southwestern Uganda. By the time I'm done at Harvard, this concept is going to go national and international. We end up in Nigeria, end up in Nicaragua, end up in Russia. We want to franchise the model like dominoes. They are right here, an American company. You are telling me, right in the, in the village where you are trying to help kids, Domino's is there. You think the founder of Domino's went to Nigeria to open a shop there? No, they franchised it. Non-profits, we need to now go to the next level of this is me, 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 to franchise the murder so people can be served all over the world. That's why I sit on the board of global giving because I didn't want to only give to the community where I was born and raised. I started there, nothing to prove anymore. We have seen the results, but the world needs me also to overcome. The kids in the Ukraine refugee camps right now need Jackson. I can't be there, but I can franchise my, this episode can get to them and the, their lives can be changed. I, we are going to be, we are coming on top of the hour. I know there's more you would like to share. I know there's so much I can also share, but your team on the ground in Nigeria are going to listen to this and I want to encourage you, do not lose hope. We will mail you a school for my village for your treat and another copy for the babies and the people who work for you in Nigeria. And I want them to look at that story and know that man from Uganda, from the village, who shared a fifth of the pencil, ended up at Makere University in Uganda, then Harvard. He's the father of four children, proud of them. I can do that too. Three PhDs later, so many universities and successful awards. Here we are now sharing this knowledge. And for those of you who already have the knowledge, come to JK one-on-one, -on -one. let's share it with others. The Bible, we started with the Bible, also says you cannot have light and cover it. Then it is not light. And then you cover it by the way, literally, the light will go off. People keep saying, why somebody blessed? Why somebody? They lie. We are letting the light shine. We are giving free knowledge. Matt is sitting through a whole hour giving it to Mena, to TJK, 
to Nyaka and to you, the world who are going to listen to it. That's light shining. If tomorrow he gets a gig with Mercedes Benz to shoot those pictures and charges them however much money, it's because he, the light has already been shining. Cannot be always give me, give me, give me, give me when you are not giving. And everybody has something to give. Could be a photograph your man is taking in Nigeria. It could be a piece of banana that somebody gives us when we are driving on dirt roads in Uganda. Could be Adam who is changing the tire while we are catching up on the next meeting we are going to be. We all have something to give. And for the teams who are supporting you and who are supporting all of us, we wouldn't do this without you. The body has so many parts. When the fingers are hurting, the head is going to also hurt. Everyone plays a part, and that's how we get to do the work we do. In conclusion, my man, Mena, share all the knowledge you want to share. Say something you haven't said that you would like to get out in honor of your mother. I will definitely make a contribution coming from my mother to honor your mother. Amazing women, one born in Nigeria, one born in Uganda. Both are not here to see what we are doing, but their spirits are alive and their legacies will live forever. The stage is yours, man. Go at it. You are muted. Yes. So <laughs> um I really I really just want to give thanks. So I what I would like to do right now is just say is just say a prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father God, we thank you so much. We thank you so much. It is impossible for us to completely understand all that you do for us in every waking moment. Breath to breath, step by step, you are the one that strengthens us. You are the one that gives us life. You are the one that takes life. You are the one that perpetuates life. You are the one who is with us in all that we do in every single waking moment. You are here. Father, you are the same one who brought the Israelites out of the land of Egypt. That's right. Father, so many people can look at that story and put it into their life right now. Many of us, as my brother Jackson said, walking the streets of Uganda barefoot, then now you taking them out of that and bringing them into the land of milk and honey and into the land of Canaan. Spiritually, it's a spiritual experience. It's a spiritual thing that you do, Father bringing us out of bondage. Father, the only bondage that we look to be in is in your bondage. We want to be prisoners of Jesus Christ, as Paul said. We want to be your prisoners. We want to be your servants. We want to work for you. This world is filled with many things that can make us look away from being that servant that you call us to be, to give him the glory that you rightfully deserve. Father, we thank you for people like Jackson who create Nyaka. We thank you for people like Matt who gives seven years who live a life very similar to, to Jacob, giving seven years and another seven years, another seven years with his uncle Laban. We give thanks for people like Matt who see the path that God wants them to walk and continue giving until it is fulfilled. When he was wrestling the angel, I will not give in until I receive that blessing, until you bless me. Yes. Israel, we give thanks. We give thanks so deeply for everyone who is going to watch this. We give thanks so deeply for this technology that allows us to interact with one another in miles upon miles of distances. Mm -hmm. To be able to be in America and interact with Uganda and interact with Nigeria and interact with all different parts of the world. Father, we give thanks. We give thanks for all the souls who have given to all the different things that we are doing in this world. We give thanks to all the souls who want to give, who are maybe just thinking about us, or maybe just praying for us. We give thanks for all the souls who have been positively affected by what we have done in our lives. And above all, we give thanks to you for allowing all of this to transpire. While they say, your will be done, your will be done. Amen. Your will be done. As it is in heaven, let it be on earth. All that you have looked, looked at, all the things that you have thought as you are in the heavens, let it, let it all be fulfilled here on earth. Let your will be fulfilled on earth. And let your kingdom be established 
Amen. in the spirit, in the physical. We know we cannot save everyone, but Father, we can, like my brother Jackson said, there are many seeds dispersed, but there are those few that do fall on fertile soil and they increase some tenfold, some thirtyfold, some sixtyfold, some hundredfold. We ask that you receive this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen, Pastor. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank Those you. Those of us who are listening again, do subscribe, share, and comment. This is a special one that we ended with the prayer. We know the Bible says, with God, nothing is impossible. We all mm -hmm. know the best is yet to come. Thank you. Thank you both for spending time on this Sunday. It definitely made my day. And uh, I think it will make many others days as we uh, share this on YouTube. And um, one final blessing um, to our brother Justice. Um, that's uh, one of the close connections that Menelik and I share. There's Justice right there. And uh, many of the Niaka FC members will be watching this. They wear football for justice on their shirts. And um, and I just wanted to share that connection that uh, Menelik is uh, Justice's older brother. And uh, just sending a, a blessed love to Justice. Mm. Uh, thank you both for this time. And, uh, oh, sorry, before we end, uh, right yes. now in Nigeria, Today, we are having a soccer event. So every month, we have a soccer event in memory of justice. And so right now, as this Zoom call has been happening, there are children kicking soccer balls, snacking, and wow. having a wonderful time in memory of justice. So um, I just thought it was so special that we picked this time. And we were supposed to do the event yesterday, but it's just so wow. special that this is happening right now. Yeah. They're wow. kicking soccer balls right now. And like my brother's spirit is just running around with them and having a good time. Yeah. Let me tell you, I, I actually wanted to bring this up earlier, but the conversation was really deep. The fact that we are recording this when France just played a soccer game <laughs> against Poland, uh, just as I was finishing, I had my phone watching what's what's happening, and I said to myself, "How interesting! We're going to be talking to you, the brother of justice. We had the team in Uganda in honor of justice, and now you are sharing Nigeria is playing a tournament in honor of justice on World Cup season of justice. Please tell your mom and your dad." that justice nah, his spirit and life lives on and we continue to live on Matt and I selected a team worked with an amazing team in Uganda hard working people who are putting on that uniform for justice and kick the ball and fulfill their dreams in honor of this um, terrific terrific young man I never met, but he's right here in my heart. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.